Despite the Western styling and the friendly presence of Uncle Sam, Taiwan, the Republic of China, is one of the four so-called dragon economies of Asia. Quietly enjoying an economic miracle that's made it the world's 12th largest trading economy and industrial power. And for some of its 20 million people, the future looks assured. The Hans are the families and descendants of Chiang Kai-shek's defeated nationalist army, who fled here from the communists in 1949 and stayed to dominate the place. Most dominated and least considered in Taiwan are the aboriginal tribes. They're not accepted in Han Chinese society unless they leave their culture behind or in museums. They migrated to the island more than 5,000 years ago, probably from the South Pacific. Ever since, they've suffered. First at the hands of the Dutch and Spanish, then the Han invaders in the 17th century, followed by brutal exploitation by the Japanese. Now, what's considered the colorful aspects of their culture are commercialized for tourists. The show at the Ulai Aboriginal Cultural Village is said to be run by the Amis tribe of Ulai, but in fact, access to the whole area is controlled by the Han Chinese. Another anomaly exists on the streets. The tourist shops, all run by the hands, just shouldn't be there. They're on land in a mountain reservation area. And whilst Aboriginal maidens smile down from the cards, the law is being breached. The government turns a blind eye and the Amis people can do nothing about it. Traditional dances of the Amis are another feature of the Ulai village. Again, the shows are supposedly run by the Aborigines, but by permission of the hands. It's said that the dance shows serve as an alternative occupation to prostitution for the girls, but many are still sold into the brothels of Taipei or Japan. Most of the tribes were forced down from the mountains in order to cultivate the plains. Like her village, this 95-year-old sits between two worlds. Tattooed when she was 19, as all brides had to be, she remembers the exploitation of her mountain land by first the Japanese and then the Han Chinese. She also recalls how both colonizers replaced her true name with one of their choosing. Even the old established religions couldn't prevent the insults and pressures imposed to make the Aboriginal people assimilate. Today, the tribe's people still can't register in their original names, and their children are unable to learn of their language or their culture at school. Five years ago, the Chinese started a logging program on these slopes above a village. As a result, a massive landslide during a typhoon last year nearly destroyed it. The slopes are traditional Taroko tribal land. The villagers' permission hadn't been sought for the logging, but 40 residents paid the price. The deforestation was carried out with government approval. Another Taroko village in the same area is also under constant threat. Like all the other tribes people, the villagers are not allowed to own land, just watch others exploit it. Here they have to witness their own land being mined and quarried above them, again with the government's approval, and hope that the polluted air doesn't choke them. Last year, they won a battle, though. Four or five cement factories tried to locate here, but the villagers demonstrated successfully. This is an Amis tribal village. On the banks of a river, it's recognized by all Aborigines as one of the best settlements in the Taipei region. Now, the government wants to put a highway through it, so they expect the bulldozers any day. government bulldozers have already been here, along with 200 police to quell any protests from these illegal settlers. This is Taipei, where the dispossessed and unemployed Aborigines come to look for work and sustenance. Buying or renting accommodation is out of their reach, and despite many requests, they are denied land or homes by the government, so they build their own shanty towns. Squeezed off their traditional land, some, like this man, have lived here for 30 years. He says he came here just to survive, but the government can't respect the culture and life of Aborigines in Taiwan because they are Han, Chinese. He no longer knows what to do.
Certainly there'll be no sympathy from the authorities who cruelly turn a blind eye to other illegal settlers in Taiwan's cities. It's common knowledge that there are thousands of illegal developments and that the government only moves the Aboriginal ones. But the struggle goes on. The Aborigines are finally making their demands heard in some areas, although they're given no more than a token political presence in the parliament. However, this festival represents something of a breakthrough. A purely cultural occasion, it was funded by the government for the first time ever. Perhaps things are swinging the Aborigines' way at last.